Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to the Circling Seattle Sports Podcast. This is the 150, well, I say podcast, but some of you may be watching the video version of this. Uh, this is the 156th episode of the podcast itself, the 48th installment of the Seattle interview series. I am joined by uh, Coach Mel White, uh, Buffalo State University alum, also a couple other alums in there. Uh, but the, the focal point here is being the UW women's hockey coach. Uh, a lot, I'm sure, that you know took to get to where we're at even now. But, I mean, how are you doing? You know, we had the season end uh, for that inaugural season of your guys' uh, puck place tournament. What is, and obviously, what you are working on outside of that, but how have things been for you in this uh, kind of springtime that we've got now? Good. Um, thanks again for having me. I'm so excited to be on today and to be able to get to share more about UW women's hockey. Um, so right now, I think a lot of people would think maybe the spring is a little bit of a downtime for hockey, but we are right back into uh, planning our prospect camp that's coming up in May. We've got that the first weekend in May at the Kraken Community Ice Center. Super excited to see the up and coming talent there. Um, and then also we're just still working on recruiting and planning and fundraising, um, because it takes a lot of fundraising and obviously a lot of people to be able to roster a team. Um, but I am thoroughly impressed with our first year and the number of, um, people that we had coming out to play and who were on the team. And so that bodes very well for next year. Um, so lots of planning already for, for season number two. I can imagine, you know, being, part of that coaching staff, you know, the people in the stands, obviously, because like, okay, we're going to switch to a different season that we'll watch. But obviously, you know, I'm sure for you, especially, you know, getting this program to where you're aspiring for it to be, there's not necessarily, I guess, an off season. Um, so before we touch uh, at UW where, you know, we'd love to be, um, I want to, you know, get back to sort of the background of you, right? Where would you say that your hockey journey really began? Because if I garnered this correctly, if I researched this correctly, uh, you played the sport here in the area. Now, I know mm -hmm. that might have been in scarcity because of, I mean, you know, the way that things have gone since we had the different levels of hockey in this city. But how did that hockey journey really begin for you? Yeah, so I did grow up playing here. I started playing actually at a local association called Snow King. Uh, they're still around up in Kirkland. They've got a couple more ice sheets now, which has been exciting to see. Um, I am one of four siblings. Uh, I'm the oldest, all girls, um, but we all love sports. And my parents were pretty awesome. I mean, they're still awesome. They were just supportive of us playing sports. So I saw hockey on TV when I was like six years old and was like, hey, I wanna try that. That looks really fun. Um, I think my parents were a little bit like, how, okay, like let's figure this out, um, but they did. And they, they got me out on the ice for a couple skating lessons. And then I started the beginners program up at Snow King and started playing in my first season um, up there when I was about seven years old. And I, at that time too, it was, primarily known as boys hockey. It was co-ed, you know, we were sort of welcome. Um, and so I remember being one of like two girls at the entire even tryout showing up as they split up the teams. So um, it was definitely a unique and new experience too of showing up and being the only girl. Um, and that was pretty true for the first like five, six years of my hockey career when I was playing boys hockey. Um, and so I played with Snow King for a while and then this organization, uh, called WUFA, um, kind of came into emergence. And so when I was going then from like kind of grade school to high school and starting to get more competitive in hockey, um, I joined the Washington wild. And at that time there was just one U19 team. And so <laughs> I'm like a 13 year old playing on this U19 team. Um, and it was pretty cool to then get that experience of playing with everyone who kind of had a similar story to me, was excited to be playing a higher competitive level of hockey. So we would practice here in Washington in like the shoreline area for those of you who know Highland Ice Arena, that's where we practiced. Um, and then we would go compete up in Canada. So all our games, all our tournaments, 
um, we're up in Canada. And so we started going to a couple out east when I got a little bit older. Um, so played there um, and then did like spring leagues and everything uh, to continue to just to develop my hockey skills and my hockey sense. And I really just fell in love with the sport. Um, I obviously still love it to this day. Um, but that, that itch to keep competing came. So I got the chance to go play at Buffalo state out in New York. Um, and then unfortunately had some really bad hip injuries, but it, it did give me that chance to fall in love with coaching. Um, so that's a little bit about my hockey background. And just, just, to you know, I don't want to skip ahead, obviously to, you know, the, the future here, well, well, the current state, but I mean, just seeing, you know, with the ice plex uh where it is now and the crowds it attracts the different age groups it attracts I mean what can you say for I guess the opportunities now that some of these young kids these young girls get to play this sport you know with the ice flex being around and with you know hockey being I guess more popularized in the area mm -hmm. now if that make I'm, I'm, I think if I'm uh, perfect uh conveying that correctly you know as opposed to you know how you had it obviously you talk about being a 13 year old having to play with uh, other women that were nine years up, I mean, six years up, pardon me. Um, so just, I guess, the comparison of where you were to where the opportunity may be now, you know, for some of those girls that are at that age. It's really, really cool to see the growth and development of the sport. Um, having more ice arenas just in the state um, is going to be so helpful to being able to create opportunities to for girls and young women to compete without having to do that much travel um, because the travel can start to be a lot. I mean, both it provide it prevents a financial barrier for some families and just there's some kids who don't want to be away from certain social aspects for that long. So being able to have uh, the Iceplex where they're offering so many different programs and really getting into the grassroots of let's grow the sport for everyone to love it and to play it. They're doing such a good job at opening up, learn to place for different ages. So that way, even if you are like 15 years old and want to give hockey a try, you can. And I think that's just so cool. And, and it's such a unique opportunity when you're opening up a new arena, a whole new facility, a whole new team and league to be able to do that. They're really capitalizing on that, um, which I I'm grateful that they're doing that because I think the more opportunities there are for people to just even discover this sport, um, the more fun they're going to have, um, the more hockey is going to grow. Um, and then also hopefully that continues to provide more opportunities as they get older. Um, because the other thing I just love about sports is it's, it's a great healthy outlet for everyone um, to be able to continue to being you know, be active, be moving. And also I still meet some of my best friends and awesome people through playing hockey and coaching hockey. Um, so I, uh, it's impressive what the training facility has been able to do. And it's been really cool to watch that growth. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you touch on it there at the end. I mean, uh, I remember with Emerald city hockey, uh, I had, they had some giveaway for stickers back in the summer. And I said, Hey, I'd like some stickers. And they sent a little handwritten note in an envelope I was like, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then, you know, starting to do press here, uh, you know, with the show and getting into my first game, I texted the show. I sent a DM to their, their Twitter. I said, hey, I got a question for you, which is the same time they were doing a Q&A. So RJ goes, yeah, that's how a Q&A works. I was like, no, that's not what I mean. Uh, <laughs> uh, and just, you know, to see that I, the game, you know, I, again, I had not really followed the sport. Prior to this, I'll be totally honest. I know that we had the silver tips and the Thunderbirds in the area. And, you know, the totems had been talked about to me by my father, but didn't really follow it, you know, because we didn't have an NHL team at the time, didn't really follow it. But then, you know, with this and then seeing the avenues open, uh, you know, for, um, you know, having the, the, the obvious, the Kraken announced, you know, to you guys, wanting a Hillary Knight jersey when that, you know, when the Olympics were around, you know, it's just incredible to see that grow in the aspects of it in the sport. It's, it's a lot of fun. It is really cool to see. I always kind of compare the ice flex to a community center because you just see all mm -hmm. these kids running around all the time. And like you're saying, having that avenue of sports to really get yourself out there. I mean, it just, you know, with, with what we do here and all the shows we cover, I can safely say sports have played a big impact in, you know, what I've done and who I've met. So that, that totally hits home for me. Um, 
to jump to Buffalo State here. I know you talked about ending up there. How did that happen? You know, how what factored into that ultimately? Because you know, come coming from you know almost essentially cross country, right? You know, with Washington yes. heading over to Buffalo. Uh, was it just the opportunity that was provided? Was it a mix of also wanting to leave the state? How did how did uh, Buffalo State fall into play for you? Yeah, so a couple different things kind of came together to make that happen. Um, I knew from when I was like in a, a freshman in high school that I wanted to go play college hockey. So that was always like on my plate. And it wasn't just for the like esteem of getting to say you're a collegiate athlete. It was just because... I was still in this mindset of, I love competing. I love this game. And I really want to see what kind of goals I can set for myself and go after them. And so um, I had to do a lot of research and a lot of reaching out to coaches on my own. Uh, for the For the West Coast, there was like, no one was coming and flying over here to recruit us. I didn't even know how the recruiting process worked. Um, I don't think really anyone else did that I was around for hockey, especially. Um, so it was a lot of going to camps where there were college coaches there. Um, and then I also would go to the like USA hockey national development camps where you got to meet a few more people and have some insights on what that college recruiting process looks like. Um, and so I hit the ground running and did the hard work. Um, I was emailing coaches was telling them when my tournaments were out on the East Coast, kind of doing some key things and really making sure that I was interacting with coaches and assistant coaches at that level. Um, and then one of my other goals as I started to go through this process was I want to play when I am in college. I don't really want to sit for two years and practice. I really want to play. So I had to find a school that was a mix of I was going to play right away um, I was going to get a good education and kind of foster all that together. And I knew <laughs> I was like, I'm going to have to leave the state. I want to go East Coast. Um, so kind of a reality if you wanted to go play college hockey. And um, one of my best friends was from Buffalo, too, um, had some family out there. So there was a little bit of a mix of, OK, I, I have I know some people out there. Um, the, the coach is recruiting me. This is all kind of coming together. Um, and I was a little bit torn between there and another school, but everything just quite, kind of all worked out to end up there. Um, and I ended up, yeah, being able to start my freshman year and being able to play, I think I played in almost every game that year, but um, just that opportunity to be able to play, earn yourself a starting role, it, that was what I was looking for. Um, I wasn't, I was looking to play right away and I had a blast. I always tell people who are debating playing college, go for it, try it. If you don't like it, it's okay. You can always walk away from it. But I also remind them that it is time consuming, but if you love the game, go do it. You won't regret that. You, you touch on, you know, sort of uh, that freshman year coming into play, wanting to play. How do you approach that first year? Is it, hey, I need to make a name for myself. I need to go out there and show them that I need this ice time. Or was it sort of, I'm going to let things fall into place for me and do what I can to control what I can? Because I know in some situations, you might have more talent than the person above you, but it might be a seniority thing. You know, someone else mm -hmm. has a, you know, a couple years above you. How did you approach that first year? I've always just been a hard worker. And so when I went into tryouts and then practices, you know, for my first year and really all the time after that, I was going in to set the tone for myself. And it was always about what can I do to make my teammates look better? Because if I, if I'm setting my teammates up for success, I'm also going to look successful. So it wasn't just about how can I do something that stands out, but how can I make the smart play, the right play that's going to lead to a goal? Um, I was a forward. So my goal was to help score goals. <laughs> um, so it was also not just thinking so internally about what can I do to stand out? There's a little bit of that obviously in tryouts, but it's also what can I do to show that I'm, I'm looking at a team game at a complete game. Because sometimes I do think in tryouts, we get so caught up. And I'm thinking also as a coach now, 
uh, we get so caught up in like, oh my God, I missed a pass. I, I missed that shot. What am I going to do to recover? That we forget sometimes that hockey and soccer, like all these sports are complete team games. So I don't need you just shooting and scoring. I need you back checking and making sure you're helping out our goalie too. So I would try to think of all those little things that I could do that would differentiate myself. Um, so, you know, hustling to every puck, rebounding when I make a mistake instead of, instead of getting down. Um, and then the best advice I ever got from um, someone when I was growing up playing was if you want to be a leader, surround yourself with the leaders. So I made sure to go and find the team leaders and just listen to them and like kind of tried to sit next to them in the locker room, like, and try to step on anyone's toes being that freshman. Like I didn't want to, I didn't want to take anyone's seat or anything in the locker room, but like, you know, when we're um, uh, in line, ask the captain's questions or when we're at captain's workouts before unofficial workouts start, be, be there and be around them because you're going to be better just by being around them. So those are a couple of things that I had kind of in my mind going in and then just work hard and play and let that show. Yeah, I mean, you talk about making an impact both ways and just not being able, not focusing on making the next shot. Uh, it is funny to think about that just because of the game of hockey, like you're saying, that could, you can miss a shot. And then if you don't properly recover in the, the in a few seconds, pucks on the back of your net. So it is funny to think about that because you're right. I mean, it's with this sport, especially uh with how fast pace it is and uh, at least for me it's just amazing to see the the pucks always moving y you can make up for something pretty quickly uh as long as you're you know smart about it so it is great to see that obviously in your player mind but also you know as a coach now is being able to say hey you know as someone who went through that you know i know that you can turn things around pretty quick um and so just to touch on it before i skip to you dub um I mean, you talked about injury leading into the coaching career. So when that takes place and you're like, okay, I, I probably will not be looking at playing this game, you know, too much going forward is that I'm sure it, obviously it's a decent, a bit difficult, but was it like real, was the coaching aspect of it? Did that obviously ease that a little bit or was it sort of a different transition for you to sort of look at that and say, all right, this is my next step here. Oh yeah. Great question. Um, it was really hard. Cause when I first got injured, um, I was like, okay, I'll recover. I'll go through recovery and like, uh, I will avoid surgery and I'll be fine. Like I just had that mentality of I'll be fine. Um, unfortunately had to have hip surgery and hips are pretty important to playing hockey. Um, and I just, like I tried to recover, did everything to strengthen everything. And I just got back out on the ice and, and felt that I still wasn't quite up to my speed again, was a little bit nervous to get hit. And I knew if I was nervous to get hit, I'd probably get hurt because when you're nervous, you're not playing right. Um, so it was, it was challenging, um, but I had a good support system and people around me. And I even had my like college coach who, um, while I was still in New York and before I had um, my hip surgery, I was, I was tracking shots for the team. Like I was still a part of the team for the last uh, few weeks of the season, even though I wasn't physically playing. So that helped because I was able to see that like, okay, I'm still involved in this game. I can still make a difference. I can still do something um, even if I'm not actively playing. So starting to pick up on the, those things and then being told like, oh, you have an eye for this or like keep practicing this was super helpful. Just that small encouragement, like, oh, this is something you can do. I think sometimes that we don't even think about it as like former players as an option because we're so caught up in playing the game that you're like, oh, maybe I can coach. Um, and so having that encouragement was really helpful. And it took me, I think it was about another like year and a half before I really dove into coaching. And um, so I started coaching at like 20 and just loved it. And 
um, it was when I started getting involved in at, and was at like every practice consistently and at every game again, it was like, oh yeah, I'm still getting so much from this and I get to be on the ice. Um, I get to be working with student athletes and, and just going through that reminded me just how much I love the game. Um, and really coming back to coaching and being involved in hockey was just, it was like, oh, I really love the sport. I can't get away. Um, and then I just really just enjoyed coaching so, so much. And you kind of, you kind of get stuck to it and don't want to go away. <laughs> so I know that you had some coaching stops before we get to UW, but just, just, mm -hmm. um, to encapsulate all that, I'll have that after UW here. So going into UW, with the inaugural season of something, I'm sure that there is a ton that goes into that. And I'll touch on that in a second. But firstly, you talk about the coaching aspect. How do you assemble that coaching staff? How does that come into play? Who do you reach out to? Did you have some names already in your head? How does that group, I believe of uh, four, including you, uh, assemble? Yeah, so we have um, the men's coach who's been helping us along the way too, because the um, Mia and Fani originally reached out to um, Matt Cleeton, who's the men's head coach, to just start to get an idea of how do we do this? Who do we talk to? <laughs> how is this possible? Like, what do we need to do? What are our steps? And then um, I, so my younger sister actually also is a hockey player and she coaches now. She coaches over at the training facility actually for the learn to plays. Um, she knew a few of the people who are still in college uh, playing hockey and had played with them as former teammates. And she said, oh, I think they're still looking for coaches. And she's like, you should reach out to either them or like, I think Matt Cleeton is the men's head coach. So I reached out to the men's head coach and Mia because I think it was her email that was somewhere. And I said, hey, are you guys looking for help? Like, if you already have coaches, great. But like, I want to support this endeavor. Um, I just want to see this sport continue to grow for and and more opportunities too for everyone to play. And so um, I reached out to them and they were like, yes, we want your help. Um, let's do an interview. So we interviewed just to make sure we were on all on the same page, had the same values. I think that's really important when you have a team too that's so player driven, really even if it's not player driven because the athletes should be at the center of everything you do, um, that all, all your values and your visions align. And so we talked a lot about goal setting and values and what we want the team to look like in that. And then, you know, what my style of coaching is and, and what I would hope to do with the team. And that was just really fun to hear from a group that was like, well, we just want to get back to playing hockey or we want to introduce this sport to new people. Um, so we talked and then they also had known one other person who was interested in helping. So they connected us together just to make sure too, that we all got along, kind of had the same vision and ideas. And we did, which, and she brought, um, Michaela, she brings experience too, from playing club hockey herself out East. So she's, she's got the insights on some of the back end work too, that needs to be done, um, to formalize a club team. And then, um, we found Lisa, um, actually, because she's from Canada and she was like, oh, I, uh, I work at the hospital over at UW. Like I went to grad school there. This is so cool. I grew up playing hockey. I used to coach, uh, with like youth camps up in Ottawa. And so we all kind of came together and it's just amazing. Uh, the amount of people who play hockey that start to come out, uh, you're like, where did all these people come from? This is awesome. Um, and we all met and talked and just talked about our coaching visions, um, what our coaching philosophies are and, um, what we want to see out of this team. And then we also kind of define, you know, the nitty gritty of like roles we've got, you know, Lisa does a lot of our offensive coaching, Michaela defensive coaching. And then I kind of oversee all of that. And one of the really fun things for me has been to develop a practice plan and then share it with people who can give really quality feedback and who come with drills and who come with that experience. Um, Cause I've coached places before and, and this is to no fault of anybody's where you're coming up with a practice plan 
and it's maybe someone who doesn't have as much experience in hockey, but is really excited to volunteer and help the organization grow, which we need, but you're not sometimes getting that, that feedback just because they don't know. And that's totally fine. We need that spectrum of people in order to sustain youth leagues. Um, but it's been fun for me to get a little bit more out of that process, having some, some super high level and really high quality coaches. Yeah. I mean, just, you were talking about it right there with, you know, having that spectrum of people to help grow with the youth area of, of it. And it's, it is interesting to see, you know, obviously with, with uh, the NHL team, how many people it, it'll probably touch to get involved with the sport, but also, uh, I, I, I'm going to remember that crowd from that last sort of game of the, the season, not necessarily the tournament, and just see how many people were out there and, uh, you know, some of the young girls, even throughout the season that might have seen that. Because, I mean, that, that that's role model material there, too. You know, obviously the men's, you know, that's fine, sure. But, you know, obviously you guys are doing something that isn't necessarily happening. I know that there is um a push for pro women's hockey here in seattle there's uh, there's that the account that follows us too um but no that that it's really cool to see that you know and uh, obviously you know that coaching staff is a big part of it and i was interested to see how that really came into play um so th this might be a little bit tough because one year in you know this um kind of hard to gauge that i'm sure but i guess how much progress have you been able to see towards joining uh the acha uh, since obviously the creation I know again first year I'd be like hey man we got a lot of work to do but I mean have has there been any visible stuff that you can see I guess any behind the scenes stuff that's like okay like I work a lot of like in lists like in check marks like all right do this do this do this I mean has there any been been anything that you can note in that regard or is it still hey we we're working towards it you know it's part of the plan so we are absolutely working towards it. We are hoping to um, apply for the ACHA during this next hockey season to then get it for the, let's see, this will be the 22-23 season. So 23-24 season. Mm. So only like another year away, which is really exciting. Um, we really want to use this year, especially to kind of like fine tune some things that we've learned over the first year um really establish um ourselves again because then that'll help for recruiting um and then just iron out like what the expected budget will be for the ACHA like what do we need to plan to fundraise so to have another year to allow us to support ourselves I think will also make that launch into the ACHA successful because one of the things we talked about is we thought about getting our application together and doing it right away this year, but we also don't want to like jump in a little bit too soon and then maybe not be able to like sustain that momentum. Um, so we really just want to make sure we've got those key items in place to be able to sustain everything and to be able to continue in the ACHA for years to come. And so having that this next year to plan to play a little bit more also, especially because COVID was still very, well, it's still happening, but very real in the first half of the season where travel implications were still there and we couldn't get um, as many games as we would have liked with other collegiate teams. You know, we finally got that away trip to Montana, um, but we would have liked to have a few more games. It's amazing that we have Seattle women's hockey here because they are like our best friends and will play us all the time and always are reaching out to connect. And um, we actually have a few people graduating now who are like, oh, I can go play for Seattle women's. This is awesome. So we're super, it's so good that they're here. Um, and so we really want to use this year to continue to establish ourselves, develop in those key areas. And then especially work on like fundraising and budgeting because it, it costs a lot to fly to all these areas that the ACHA has teams in. Um, but we're very, very excited about that forward progress. Yeah, I mean, obviously, again, I was I was like, yeah, that might be a little early to ask that kind of thing, you know, because I'm sure there's a lot to look at. But obviously, one, excited to see that, you know, because anything, you know, with the forward momentum of this program is exciting to see. Um, but you talk about Seattle Women's Hockey Club. I remember I was leaving the building after that last game 
and I think it was Gabriella Smith, uh, one of the the netminders, uh, just talked to her. Obviously, you know, in her paths, was like, hey, you know, you know, obviously that was a lot of fun to see. And uh, I remember I had seen a group of the of the team uh, out at the uh, Thirty Two Bar and Grill after because I went to type my article afterwards. Um, I thank them obviously for being part of this, you know. Um, and I did the same thing with Gabriella and she said, they have a, that's the future of the sport right there. And that was really cool to hear that. I was, you know, that was really cool to hear. Um, but just to see it build has been great. And like you were saying, I think, I think the account tweeted it out about having some of the, the graduates go over to play there. That's really cool because, you know, some of these uh, people that might've come out to games or been fans, you know, followed along, we'll be able to see them still be in the area, you know? So that was really uh, fun to see. Here's something I'm sure you can pick a little bit of both of on each side. What are your uh, favorite memories from this past season? And what were some of the, the struggles that you had to deal with, you know, going through not only an inaugural season, but getting this together as a club team? You know, you talked about working towards that and, you know, wanting to build on some things. But so I guess some pros and some cons, you don't have to go through a full list, obviously, but I guess some of the stuff that was more prominent you know, from your memory, uh, this past season? Um, I was just, when you said that too, about the future, like, uh, that just makes me so, so happy. Um, I think I told the team probably way too much, but I hope they always remember it <laughs> just how inspiring they are and how impressive it truly is to start something from the ground up take a risk, put yourself out there and, and to run with it. Um, so I just, I think, I think I told them it like so many times throughout the season. I was like, I just hope you know that you're creating something so special, um, and doing something uh, amazing for the future of hockey and just for yourselves to, to be able to start something like you can take these, this to business later, whatever you want to decide in life. Like this is, these are lifelong skills here. Um, some of my favorite memories too are seeing the number of people and hearing the stories of people that came back to play after either playing for a year or two when they were a kid, not really enjoying it or just it wasn't their thing anymore, but they have a community now and they want to play in it. And it was just so cool to hear that and then to think of those players and their progress that they made over the season or we had a couple players who had never played hockey before and I could not imagine being like 18 19 and being like yeah I'm in college I'm just gonna go play hockey with like people that I don't know at all <laughs> I'm just like you guys took such a leap of faith and this is amazing and to stick with it like hockey is not an easy sport and to stick with it and to see their growth and to see that they want to keep playing is so, so amazing. Um, and then another highlight would just be the people who like, you know, scored their, their first goals, um, the first goal for the program by a veteran player, Leah, who's been playing hockey for a while. Who, um, and so, and then really big time to see Mia and Fani get to experience this um, because I know they were a little bit worried that it might not actually ever come together, especially mm -hmm. with COVID. Um, but to see them get to put this on for everybody and to see them be successful in it um, and, and have fun was probably one of the biggest highlights because I know how much they'd been working on this. Um, and then it's always a little challenging having a player led program in some ways where you're not there because I'm used to that that high school sports world as you know where I'm like kind of there oh. around them all the time like I know the schedule I know what's going on <laughs> um but the cool thing about like club hockey is you get to also allow the players to kind of set the tone um and so for me it was just finding that line of where do I let the players set the tone and then where do us coaches come in and set the tone and like okay, we need to focus up. Like we need to, we need to change the rhythm a little bit. So finding that line was a little bit challenging, but I mean, obviously the pros outweighed everything, like just to see them come together, play as a team, see the fact that we had like 24 people on the bench, 
the stands filling up, I was just blown away by the support. It, it was crazy. And uh, you, you touched on uh, them a little bit, but I mean, what can you, you say about that senior group that is, you know, going to move on now? Uh, obviously, with some of them, you know, like you said, potentially going on to play with Seattle women's, uh, but just what they were able to co contribute, obviously, to the club, but building it. I remember reading about, uh, I think, in the Seattle Times article, you know, getting a bunch of interest uh, from girls, some of them not coming back. Uh, just what can you say about that senior group that was able to go out and, like you said, a player driven team and how that, well, player driven group um, and what that older class was able to do uh, for the program as a whole? Um, they were just great at wanting to make this um, the best experience for everyone. So having a group of seniors too that kind of came from all different backgrounds, all different hockey skills and abilities really helped make connections with everyone on the team. Um, so I was really proud of the fact that our team felt like a cohesive team and felt like a unit despite all the different skills we had. And I think that really comes from the attitude of not just our seniors, but our leaders in general. And the fact that too, we had seniors who were, you know, showing up day in and day out, setting leadership meetings and who were um, just committed. I think those actions alone make a big difference in a team. And then to hearing them talk about how they're gonna continue to play hockey. Um, I think that trickles down to, to the rest of the team. And they see that like, oh, this is something fun that I can keep doing like it's not over and then also it's really cool because we have kind of our first alum class so like we get to have an alumni game and invite them back um so you know that's something they really want to do is be continue to be tied to the program and so we have now more advocates for the program out there and that's that's really exciting and then so you you touched on the pro, uh, prospect camp coming up in, in the first weekend of may i believe you said uh I'm sure that's part of this, but what are you looking forward to this upcoming season? You know, whether it's building on lessons from last year, seeing uh, new women come into the program, seeing obviously the fans come back once again. Uh, what are you looking forward to as the coach, obviously? Um, and I guess even in some ways, uh, I'm sure with, with the way that this sport is and the sports in general are, I guess, in a fan way. Cause I mean, I'm sure there's some ways they have to look at it. It's like, this is still really cool. I may be coaching, but there, I, I sometimes you got to smell the roses a little bit. Um, what are you looking forward to this upcoming season? Um, my coaches and I definitely talk about that. We uh, step back for a minute every now and then and are just like, look at, we have a full ice of, of players and we have people here watching us. I mean, you know, we talked about growing up and we were like, we were lucky if we had like 12 people on our bench for an entire game. Like, and so we're just, we always take a step back and are kind of like, this is, this is great progress. This is where we want to go. Um, the future of hockey is in, is in good hands. Um, so I am excited to see the number of returners coming back. Um, and to also see those new players who are ready, ready to jump in and um, really see uh, where we can grow and develop and to see who we can play this year, um, starting to get those lined up and um, really to foster uh, another hockey community here and to make sure that we are inclusive. You know, one of our big goals is inclusivity and making sure that everyone feels welcome, not only at, on our team, but at our games and supporting us. And so um, we really just want to foster that, that great community feel and, and bring that into the ice arena with us every day. And so I just can't wait to see where we take this and where our leaders want to go. Um, and it's gonna be fun to get back on the ice with everybody again. Uh, there's, there's really nothing better than stepping onto that ice for that first practice and just kind of you know, setting the drills and, and seeing where everyone plays and, and seeing 
um, seeing how certain things form out, like seeing different players work well together that maybe, you know, had never played together before and that you're seeing for the first time. So watching those little connections come together is, is super fun. And so now to, to transition from you, Dub, and look at, I mean, some of the stops in your career, obviously, because, you know, talked about uh, Buffalo State and UW, but you've had some, some notable stops here. What memories and lessons did you take from working both with USA Hockey and then some, some coaching with Bradley? I mean, what I'm sure, like in many things, even this season, I'm sure you got lessons from different situations. But, you know, USA Hockey, I'm sure it was really fun to work with, but I'm interested to hear how that worked out for you. But also, you know, the lessons from, um, I believe it was assistant coach at Bradley. So how did those different um, situations and experiences mold you into the coach that, you know, you are now and that you're continuing to grow as? Yeah, one of the cool things about working at the USA Hockey Development Camps was that I just got to meet other coaches and be around other coaches. And especially when I was like just starting in my coaching career, that was so valuable to watch other people coach um, and, and, to, and to just hear from them. And then also in that role, part of it was um, being an evaluator and evaluating players. And so being able to, to speak up and share what I think is valuable for, for a roster moving on to the regional level and to the, to the state level um, was a great opportunity to, for me to start to learn um, how to speak up and translate what I'm seeing on the ice with other coaches and, and share that perspective of what I'm seeing. Um, and then also to listen to them and see maybe, okay, we're talking about two different players, but I wonder, wonder if they would work well together, you know, different, different things like that. Um, so soaking up a ton of knowledge there. And then I was really passionate about sharing the recruiting process with other girls in Washington, because that was something that I had no real help in. And so if I could just help them and share like a very basic roadmap, then that hopefully would help someone. So one of the other cool opportunities is I would, I got to start a little bit of public speaking there through sharing a recruiting roadmap um, and learned that I actually kind of enjoy it. Um, so that was a great experience and opportunity to kind of get up in front of that group of girls and just, and, and encourage them that this is possible for you if you want it. And to let them know that like, it doesn't just end at division one, there's division one, two, three, there's club hockey. And then you can also just go find an adult league to play in. If you want to just keep playing hockey for fun, like it doesn't need to be a serious thing that you do anymore. If you don't want it to be, it can, but like, if you just want to play there's ways to find a way to do it. Um, so really encouraging that there's just those different levels. And then at Bradley, um, I basically found out they had a hockey team and was like, okay, so I'm going to go help. I don't know how, but I'm just going to go like figure out how I'm helping. So at first I kind of started in just like more of a manager role. And then I was starting to talk to the head coach and he's like, oh no, you know, hockey really well. Like you're going to help us coach. And so um, started, started coaching there with them. And that was also a unique opportunity because I was coaching a men's college club team um, and working with them on that. And um, again, it was picking up a lot of just different styles of coaching, different drills and continuing to learn uh, and refine my like coaching voice and my coaching style and figuring out that like, you can connect with different players differently and, and different players might need um, a different style in order to fully understand the drill or the goal of the drill. Um, and some players don't even need to know the goal or the why at all. They're just going to go, they see the drill on the board and they're going to go. Um, and then just learning how um, important it is to support and foster the team and, and give them their space and then come in and be, be that role that you need to fill as a coach. Um, so for me to do as an assistant, it was, it was just figuring out, um, what advice the head coach wanted from me. And then, you know, knowing that, like, he was just kind of like, no, you chime in with anything you see, like, go for it. So having, 
and then being supported continually kind of supported and, and knowing that you're you're doing well as you're learning to coach is is helpful in continuing that process it's you know through throughout this and talking to you it's it's really interesting always to hear about the player coach uh, side of things you know someone who had those experiences and knows what's going on and knows what's to look for because you've actually you know been in those skates um i did an interview a few days ago with someone with UW, uh one of the soccer teams and they went out for a year because of injury and just being able to point things out from the sideline hey uh you're missing this run you know stuff like that it, it is interesting to think about you know um and i like hearing that aspect of it because you know if i was still playing playing these sports it would be great to have that inside of it because someone actually that went through it instead of someone who, you know, didn't play the sport is doing it to volunteer, which, you know, is appreciated, obviously, but having that aspect of it, I'm sure is huge and is really helpful for, in this case, obviously with, with UW and the club team, you know, some girl, some women that haven't played the sport and being able to learn out of say, Hey, I am dealing with something that you are dealing with right now. I think that's at least how I see it. I think that's pretty valuable. Um, and it's really interesting to see how that will uh, translate, you know, as you get new players and especially with the, the college side of things, because you get new players pretty often, as opposed to maybe mm -hmm. like at the pro level, you might see someone around for a decent amount of time. Um, just something I thought was cool. Um, and then to sort of transition here, are there any similarities you see, you know, I'm talking about that with welcoming in new players and getting them adjusted to this sport. Um, are there any similarities that you might have seen with, you know, working as um, director, assistant director of student life and athletics, you know, with with prep? Uh, and I guess with working uh, with some of these student athletes at UW, is there anything that you're able to see between those two uh, positions that you have? Uh, just, I guess, on the student life side of things, obviously working at a different level, but still in the same genre in a way. Yeah, there are definitely so many kind of things that carry over. And so a big part of what I my role at Seattle Prep is welcoming that new freshman class in and making sure that they feel welcomed. And so that too, I know coming in as a freshman at any level, high school or college, you're going to have some nerves, like no matter what, like even if you put on put on the front that you're cool, like you're, you're probably nervous somewhere deep down, at least about something. And so that's why it's so important. And our seniors and our players who have a ton of hockey experience did such a good job at this this year, but it's important that they do a good job at this again next year, um, was just welcoming everyone in to make sure that they, they feel at least a little bit okay. They still might be nervous, but that they know that they're in a place where they can ask questions, people are gonna support them and are just generally excited for them to be here. And so that is something that definitely translates very well. And I think just coming from like an educational space too, I kind of always have that in the back of my mind and I'm aware that my UW student athletes, they are also balancing school. Some of them are also working school work and hockey. So definitely opening up the conversation too of like, hey, if you're ever having a rough day or you're like struggling to get to practice or just something is off, you can just come talk to me. Or if you don't want to talk and have a long conversation, you can just say, coach, I'm not feeling it. If I'm off, I'm, I might be a little off. So having that awareness from my experience working all the all day basically in in a high school has been really beneficial to my coaching career because opening up that relationship with student athletes they're going to trust you as a coach that you have their best interest at heart so when you either have to make a tough decision or um you or they have something hard to tell you it's going to be easier because that trust is fostered I think that's one of the biggest things that I've learned that's like crossed over from, from both those settings. Um, and, and being able to set the tone of that from the very beginning with freshmen. So that way they know if they have like a really, a question that's weighing on their mind, they can come ask it, but they can also go ask the seniors. Um, I think that's really important that they know that like, 
we're here to help you. We're here, we're here to make sure this is a good experience. Um, and so making sure that eases the nerves of any, any freshmen or new players. Yeah, just with, you know, looking at that position that you've got with Seattle Prep, obviously, and to see not only with the college level, but like you've talked about, like we've looked at with people that have touched the sport at different ways at a younger age and now trying to maybe get back into it. Like you said, uh, with the past season, some women who have never played the sport before, and I want to jump into it. I was just sort of interested to see, because I'm sure there are those diff many different similarities, like you said, right? Just was interested to see what you were able to see um, through your eyes on that side. And then in doing my research, obviously I, I could be wrong on this, but I think I believe I saw you with some articles on a website called The Pink Puck. Is that some writing that you were able to do? I saw some articles, I think about, I saw a Hasek article, some different blues articles. Is, was that, was I correct in that? When what maybe got you into writing? Uh, and was that something that had to stop at some point or do you still like to do that when you get time? So that was when I was in college still. Uh, I, I'm a communications major. Um, I thought I wanted to get into journalism. So I appreciate everything that you're doing because I know how hard you're working. <laughs> and um, I uh, was like, oh, I'll write about hockey. I know hockey and this is something I can do. And I enjoyed it. Um, I definitely enjoy writing. I enjoy the process. I think it's something that I can still be a lot better at. Um, I don't do as much of it anymore um, just because of time. But yes, in college, I did some articles on um, mainly was on the blues because it was while I was in over in that area. Um, but yes, did did some hockey articles. I was doing the research and trying to make sure I covered some bases. And I was like that hmm, you got you know, it. in the, the, the writer bio, I was like, that looks right. So just had to make sure that was correct. But no, it's I mean, as someone who's like you were saying, trying to do the same thing, it was cool to see that uh, just kind of scroll down and see four pages of articles. I was like, okay, all right. Um, and then just to wrap up here on sort of a note that I've been holding since I saw it, you know, you talked about the injuries and worrying about your hip and, you know, if you're going to worry about something while you're playing and you're not going to really be playing hundred percent, was it, how cool of a moment was it for you to, I believe, play with your sister in the tournament, um, to be able to get back on the ice. I know that you've talked about getting on the ice for practices, but to play in that regard, what, how was that moment for you to really get back out there and was that sort of surreal have you been playing been able to play before that or was that sort of the first experience back in a way yeah so I um had over let's see two years ago I had like another large hip surgery to repair something so for a couple of years I was for actually Ugh. for a while, I wasn't doing anything except for, yeah, skating at practices, um, just coaching because it was, I had tried to play a game at one point years ago, like probably like five or six years ago. And it was just like, so painful. Um, so then, um, I finally had this like larger hip surgery to really repair the bigger issue. And I had jumped out on the ice for all of coaching. Um, cause I was like, good to go. And then I played in a tournament over Christmas with um, a bunch of the women from Tacoma from their league, the RWHL. And that was my first time playing in games in, in like two years since the surgery, but I don't even know, like probably like five years in real reality. Um, so that was pretty amazing. And I was like, I feel good. I feel strong. Like I'm excited to be out here. And so that was just uh, that was pretty surreal. I was like, wow, I'm doing this. I'm not afraid. Like I feel good. Um, and I had been working out ever since then to like, really feel, feel strong and good to go. And like, you know, my, my doctor, of course, too, told me that it was okay. But so I did all those steps for anyone who's like younger listening, <laughs> do the right things. <laughs> um, but then when I got to play with my sister, so my sister is six years younger than me we had never played together before because of the age difference. And just like, we never matched up. Um, that was just like, 
Uh, one of the things that I looked forward to was when we both like got messages to like come play on this team together. I also got to play on the team with our goalie, Julia. Um, and I had seen her growing up because she was, she's a little bit older than my sister. We had never played on the same team either, but I'd seen her like kind of grow up as a goalie. So it was super fun to play with her too, but to get to play on play with my sister, be like on a line together just, and, and after everything, um, after all the injuries, like, oh, so much fun, like just kind of, I think what every like sibling duo does want who plays the same sport. Like you just want to play with your siblings. Um, it's fun to play against them too, but definitely, definitely fun to finally be on a team together. Um, and, and we both just like enjoyed it. And, and luckily we, mesh well on the ice we figured out we do play well together <laughs> i you know just in in reading about obviously the injuries and then you talking about how that helped you transition to coaching but then also remembering seeing that tweet about playing together it was, definitely seemed like a cool moment and it was something i did want to touch on so with that being said i always leave socials in the description we'll obviously leave the website in the description but also the link for the prospect camp just so if that's something that's been drummed up that can be found accessibly um i want to congratulate you i believe got are uh, getting engaged from what i saw so yes congratulations on that obviously Thank you. Moment for you we talked about all the sports and the coaching aspect of it but real life has its turns obviously and I want to congratulate you on that i was, i mean obviously i'm sure that you want to talk about the prospect camp but is there anything else that you want to leave us with lasting message, you know, obviously coming out to the games. Is there anything that you want to put out there uh, message wise? Yeah, I first of all, just want to thank everyone who has supported us throughout this first season and who has shown up, whether you've come to one game, come to all of them. Thank you to you for covering us. And then also Cheyenne for coming out and taking pictures like the support has been awesome. Um, and I just want to say also that if you want to play hockey, there's people around you who do support you and who want to see you out on the ice. So come find us. Um, also for any, um, young women or people who identify as women who want to get into coaching and you have questions, like I am so happy to help you because we need more of you in coaching. So like, just we need, let's foster that growth together. Um, and yeah, follow UW women's hockey and, and get excited about the upcoming season. A good point on there because obviously we'll link your socials, but got to put the teams in there as well. So uh, I appreciate you taking time out of your day. And I li and like I told you at the end of the season, just looking forward to next year because I will tell anyone else that's looking at this photo, the, the photo uh, this video, it was a lot of fun to go to these games. Not only, you know, because it's another year dub team, but also to see more hockey really because, you know, covering the Kraken's great but to have more of it, have more hockey going on and to be able to say that it's your school, even better, even better. Yeah. So with that being said, I appreciate you taking time out of your day and look forward to seeing you whenever we hear about um, maybe some before regular season games, stuff like that. We'll, we'll yeah. keep an eye out and we'll obviously always uh, put that on socials. Awesome. Thank you so much, Charles.